Well, hello, lovely humans, and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, we're doing something that's been highly requested for a very, very long time, and that is DIY versus all-inclusive. Which should you pick? But before we launch into that, I want to share some exciting information with you guys. Um, I'm gonna need to close that window. That's what, that's exciting. It's just cool enough to have the windows open and I was excited, but it's too loud, hold on. So something I've been wanting to do for like a super long time now is to get a PO box. Um, because I think it'd be super fun if you guys felt like it, if you wanted to share these, um, to send over save the dates or your in wedding invitations if you wanted to share them with me. That may not be some people's speed, but other people might be like, yes, that sounds so exciting. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that in the description box of all of my videos. I Ideally moving forward. I would absolutely love, love, love to see them. I just think it's so exciting to connect like me yelling at a camera to like real life people. <laughs> Speaking of which, I actually crashed my first wedding this last weekend, which like 10 out of 10 recommend. That was great. A uh, subscriber's mom reached out to me and was like, hey, but I was getting married this weekend at this town that's super close to you now. So if you're interested, like to pop on by and say hello, I think it would make her day. And I did. And this is what happened. <laughs> And it was great. <laughs> so who knows, maybe if you shoot on over your uh, your invitation, I could crash your wedding too. Of course, this is not guaranteed. It's not like I'm gonna be crashing weddings every single weekend, but you know, every once in a while it might be super fun. But now let's go ahead and talk about the highly requested subject of DIY versus all inclusive. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. So to kick things off, it's important to understand what is all-inclusive, like what does that mean? Because I think all of us kind of understand the concept of a DIY wedding, but what exactly defines all-inclusive? Now, it does mean a little bit of a variety of things. Uh, there's a difference between an all-inclusive venue and all-inclusive catering, right? Now we're just going to be talking about the venues themselves. Which one will be better for you and your partner in your planning process? All-inclusive typically means that it will cover your rentals, such as um, china, flatware, glassware, um, and tables, chairs, and linens, as well as the staff to set that up and tear that down. It also means it will likely cover your catering and the staff to set that up and tear that down. And your bar, all of the alcohol that you'll be serving for the night. Actually, they'll be serving for the night because again, they'll set that up, serve it, and tear it down. Most often, that is what all-inclusive means. However, there are a few places that will go a step above or five steps above that all-inclusive title and add a few more things to a package to kind of streamline your booking process. All-inclusive may sometimes include florals, DJ, desserts, decor, and photography. All-inclusive companies or venues will typically charge either a flat fee like $10,000 for 100 people or a venue fee, a flat fee for the venue, and then a cost per person or some sort of mixing and matching of those two concepts. But usually there will be some sort of minimum that you have to pay or meet in order to book and or use that package. I cannot stress this to you guys enough because there is no standard when it comes to all-inclusive. You do need to read your contracts to see what they will and what they will not do and how they will be charging you and what they will be charging you for. The last thing I want is for you guys to get caught with a food and beverage minimum that you weren't anticipating. So read your proposals and read your contracts very carefully. Now, I don't feel a huge need to explain what a DIY wedding is because those are pretty much self-explanatory, but typically that means a venue that doesn't offer those things. <laughs> Whether that's rentals, catering, bartending, florals, DJ, it's the kind of venue where you have to procure all of those vendors yourself or with the help of a wedding planner. They also typically don't have, obviously, food and beverage minimums if they don't offer food and beverage. And they usually don't have a pricing structure based off of your guest count. Now, a DIY venue does not mean that you're absolutely DIYing everything, all right? It just means you're piecemealing everything together yourself. You're doing it yourself. We're not necessarily DIYing our centerpieces, we're not necessarily DIYing our own catering, but you are putting together this whole process, all of your vendors, by yourself, as opposed to an all-inclusive location that would ha already have it ready to go for you. So now that we've established the difference between the two of those, let's talk about the pros and cons of each. First, let's talk about the most obvious detail. That would be money. What's the difference in cost between DIY and all-inclusive? And this is not a hard and fast rule, unfortunately. I wish it was like DIY is always cheaper all-inclusive is always more expensive because it would just kind of help us figure out the difference between the two. But it depends on your expectations and your 
priorities. If you want all-inclusive catering, it might be more expensive to bring them into a DIY venue than it will be to have them at an all-inclusive venue. With a DIY venue, you may be building out a kitchen to help that catering team pull off your meal successfully. With an all-inclusive venue, they already have a kitchen on site and that catering team works there every single weekend. So it's not a problem and it's not going to be more expensive to book all-inclusive catering. So you can kind of see the difference here. But on the flip side of that, if you don't want to pay $50 to $85 per person for the meal, which is kind of a lot of us, you typically don't have the freedom to bring in your own catering company at an all-inclusive location. Their caterer is their caterer and you either use them or you book another location. And that's what that's where the DIY option can be really, really handy because if you don't want to pay the all-inclusive cost for catering, you don't have the freedom to do that with an all-inclusive venue. You have the freedom to do that with a DIY venue. Which brings me to my next point. There's a difference between the amount of time that you will need to invest in your wedding planning process between a DIY wedding and an all-inclusive wedding. I may be overstating the obvious here, but a DIY wedding is going to take a lot more of your time or a wedding planner's time to pull off successfully. To do the cost comparisons, to do research, to kind of really delve into different options, that's gonna take you a while to put together and really find someone that works well for you. That can be seen as either a pro or a con, depending on what your lifestyle looks like, depending on how much time you have, depending on how much you like planning weddings. If you do not have the time nor the energy to do the research, then it sounds to me like an all-inclusive location may be a great option for you. But if you don't have the money and or you do have the time, then I suggest getting boots on the ground, getting out there and really researching and cost comparing what works best for your budget and for your taste. Which conveniently drops us off at our next point, personalization or to taste, if you will. Have you ever read a recipe with like salt to taste? And you're like, what does that even mean? That means you salt it to your taste. Is that a very bizarre analogy for a wedding planning video? Sure, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But if you think about it, it kind of does. When you are creating and crafting your wedding day and your ideal vision for your wedding day, some of us want to season to taste. Some of us want to create something that feels personalized, that feels catered to exactly what we want it to be. Others of us go, you know what, I just want somebody else to figure it out. So if personalization is important to you, there are some elements to an all-inclusive wedding that may or may not prevent you from being able to do that. Um, I met with a couple recently and they really want pizza for their wedding day, which I think is super cute and I love a good pizza, all right? If they went with an all-inclusive venue though, there's a likelihood that they will not be able to get pizza unless they're paying a specialty fee to make that happen with the catering team that's already on site there. So my recommendation to them was to go with not an all-inclusive location, but more of a DIY one, both because it better suited their budget and they had a very specific personalized thing that they wanted to do for their wedding meal. And then last but not least, and that I could think of before filming this video, the last, <laughs> The last pro con that we should probably be discussing is decision making. Do you like doing it? Are you type A? Do you like planning weddings? Do you like chasing down vendors for quotes and doing cost comparisons? You will automatically be one of two people in this moment. You'll be like, oh heck yeah, or oh heck no. I mean, I mean, you might be somewhere in the middle of like, I mean, sometimes, but not always. Your like your mental health throughout your wedding planning process is just as valuable as your time and just as valuable as your money. So if making a ton of decisions stresses you out, you probably need someone to make those decisions for you or limit them for you. And that is where an all-inclusive option would be so, so great. Because instead of having 150 different catering options, you have three different meals that you can choose from from one specific caterer. And it really lessens the pressure on having to make a decision on every single little thing. However, if decision making is not a big stressor for you, then the DIY route is a wonderful way to go because then you can really, again, personalize it, you can get it to work with your budget, and you've got the time and the mental space to make those decisions. Now let's talk about my opinion on um, DIY versus all-inclusive. To be honest, I love them both. There are elements of each that I find extremely favorable. For the DIY weddings, we have seen so much customization and personalization that were moments that I will always remember. And that's not to say that the all-inclusive ones don't have that as well, but the meals are typically more memorable or at the uh, DIY one because couples can get so creative with what they're serving. But the all-inclusive ones, selfishly, 
are way easier to run because typically there's a catering manager and or a venue manager or sometimes called a venue coordinator. Now there is a great difference between a wedding coordinator and a venue coordinator. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that video up on here. If you guys need a little refresher, a little crash course in what the difference is because we love our venue coordinators, we respect them, but we don't want to expect a different role out of them than they've been hired to do. Thank you, okay, good night. So as you can see, there's a benefit to each of them. The one thing I will say is when a venue goes so all-inclusive that they offer desserts, florals, decor, DJ, and photographer, that's what that's when I start to go, oh, I want my clients to have a little bit more say in this. Um, a recommended DJ is great. A recommended photographer, fantastic. But something I always talk about here, and I'm like just the biggest nerd about it, is finding personalities that work well with you. Yes, there is a benefit to working with a photographer who has worked at that property multiple times. However, it doesn't hurt to book a photographer who's never worked there before. Instead, I think it's more important to find a photographer that you and your honey connect with personally because that person's gonna be in your face a lot on your wedding day. And if you're just picking someone because they're off of a list from a venue, then you are doing yourself and your spouse to be a disservice. And on the opposite of the spectrum, when it comes to DIY, what typically concerns me the most is when I see a venue that doesn't offer power or toilets. That's when I'm like, we may have gone too far on the spectrum in this direction. So somewhere in between those, you know, like where you can still choose your own photographer and you have toilets to use, like those, that's, that's where I'm at. That's, those are the sweet spots to be in. So what about you guys? Are you doing the more DIY route? Are you doing the more all-inclusive? Do you fall somewhere in between? Let me know in the comments down below. Um, also want to give a massive shout out to all of our master plan club ladies. Well, I think what we, what did we call ourselves? The Wolfies? I don't know. There was a couple names, the bridal bunch couple names that we were coming up with. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, we have a monthly phone call where once a month I sit down and answer your questions in live time. Just a full hour of answering your questions. So if you're interested, jump on down below. There's going to be a link if you want to look into it. It's a monthly thing. You can keep going or cancel at any time. It's perfectly fine. I'm, I'm, I may be overselling this and all the people in the group are probably like, Jamie, shut up. We don't want anybody else in here because it's so small and cute and wonderful but I wanna make sure you guys know that it's an opportunity should you choose to come join us. If you haven't done so already, jump on down there and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day bride. And until next week, bye guys.